It's so funny, you know, because when I'd be thinking about my life, I wasn't always like this. I have to laugh at myself sometimes. I can't believe what God has done in my life. Because I lived such a wrong life. I lived a heathen lifestyle. You know, I was an alcoholic, drug addict, sinner, womanizer, rich, famous, privileged, lived behind community gates, millions of dollars in the bank, had everything, but had nothing. On my way to the end of life, had it not been for Jesus stepping in and touching my life. Because we make it like, because you have everything, you have it all together. Well, that's not really true. You know, that's what a society has made us believe. If you live such a certain way, then you got it all together. Well, the devil been lying forever, and he's been deceiving people forever. You know, and he deceived me just like everybody else. But had it not been for my sweet little old mama. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You got that right. Go on, girl. Had it not been for her. Had it not been for her prayers over my life, I wouldn't be standing here today. Yes. So that's for some of you mothers in here. Don't you stop praying. You keep praying. It's not up to you to see it. Just let God do it. That's what my mother did. She was dying from cancer. She died at the age of 55 from terminal breast cancer. She was dying and praying for her kids to find salvation. She would go home to be with the Lord. She would cross over the Jordan River to go home to be with the Lord so we can live. That's why I'm living today, because she sacrificed her life and said, God, take me so they can live. And the legacy will go on because... Her prayers, my sister finds a journal under her bed, and she's praying for all her kids. And she gets to me in the journal, and she's praying to God that God knock him off of his throne. Boy, that's one heck of a prayer, right? <laughs> Literally, I, I had no idea she was praying for me. I'm playing Major League Baseball successful, making millions of dollars and doing all these great things and living a heathen lifestyle and out there just doing what I want to do, and mama's praying behind the scenes. She's praying for the salvation of her son because he's famous, and she don't care about my career. She's more concerned about my salvation. And it has come to pass that God would knock me off of my throne, and he would stop me. Don't let God have to stop you. It's not pretty. Trust me, I've been there. What do you think Saul was like when he was on his way to Damascus Road? Jesus knocks him off a horse and blinds him for three days and three nights. Blinds the man for three days and three nights. He stops him. That's exactly what he did to me. Stop me in my tracks. With my wife, Tracy, being the one leading me back into church. Going on 18 years of marriage this, this year. But she was the one to lead me back into church to get well. I had nothing I was $3 million in debt, didn't have a driver's license. I was using drugs. I wanted to die. She was pulling me out of dope houses, talking about God's got a plan for you. She's banging on doors, pulling me out and saying, God's got a plan for you. I says, why don't you and that God just leave me here and let me die? She goes, you're just not that lucky. <laughs> you don't believe me, just go look at our ministry page, findingyourway.com. That's the woman that led me back in church, and to the Lord. So most of you men that are in here, you need to understand that woman that God has given to you is a gift. We, we can never see it because the devil blinds us and keeps us blinded and want us to think that it's something else out there, something else greater on the other side. Everybody got some junk in their trunk. Might as well stay with the one you got and deal with it and clean it up. Because that's what me and Tracy did. We cleaned it up. We cleaned the junk in our trunk up and got well with God and let God heal us and bring us to wholeness and righteousness because of, not because of anything or great about us, it's because of Jesus. It's because of Jesus. 
Jesus is not just a man. Jesus is a holy man, a righteous man. There's nothing lacking in him. There's no sin in him. That blood is holy blood. When he was hanging on that cross at Calvary, he was shedding that blood for me. He was shedding that blood for you so you would be able to experience life and experience it abundant life. That's his blood of shedding, and he's, th he's there, and he's saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He's talking about the people that are mocking him, just like a society today, the Gentiles. Oh, there is no God. Why? Because the society told us there is no God. They tell us that everything else is more important. He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He was on the cross having mercy on people, for people. What other man going to do that for you? Then he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? But his last words were so profound on the cross what Jesus said. He said, it is finished. He finished everything. He didn't finish some things. He finished everything for us. Everything that is killing you, Jesus already killed it at the cross. Whatever it is, anxiety, fear, doubt, loneliness, Jesus crushed it at the cross. But I can't experience that until I come into a relationship with him. See, the reason why I wasn't experiencing that because I wasn't in a relationship with Jesus. I was like everybody else, you know, you know straddling the fence. I know his name, but I denied his power. Like so many, we know his name, but we deny his power. It's like so many athletes and people in the public life, Hollywood, Hollywood, we know his name, but we deny his power. So what that means is you cannot experience Jesus because you denied the finished work on the cross, his power. You denied his death. You denied him going to the tomb, getting up early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. We have denied that. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live. It is Christ who lives in me. It is Christ who rules and reigns over my life. When you come into that place, when you no longer deny Jesus and you become a true follower of Jesus, you will know how good he really is. You won't wrestle with that anymore. You will understand there is nobody like him. I don't care who they are. I don't care how much success you have. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care what you, get, what you accumulate from earthly standpoint. Nobody will ever be greater than Jesus. Because you know why? That's the only one that conquered death. Died, went to the tomb, and got up. All of us go die, we ain't getting up. There's a reason why he is here. He's alive and well, waiting for people to surrender themselves to him and submit to him and live an abundant life and enjoy what life is really all about. See, the life was created for good. You, you, you do know God created this for good, right? Don't you know that? I mean, you go to Genesis 3, you think about Adam and Eve when he bought them and, you know, they opened the door. One man bought sin in, Adam, because they didn't obey God. And then he goes and brings Jesus from the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He brings a son in that brings grace and mercy for all. One brought sin in for all of us to fall short from Genesis 3. The Bible said we will all fall short of the glory of God. It didn't say some of us, it says all. But you don't have to stay there. So many of us stay there and think there's no other way out. We just compromise. We do everything. We, we just give ourselves. And, you know, I was no different than anybody else. And, man, I just like, I, I, I realized that one thing, man, when I finally got with God, I said, man, you know, I wasted a lot of time on foolishness. I could have been well a long time ago. Some of, some of us, we could be well if we just enter into God's Will. God's will. God's will for our life. You know, you think about the Israelites. They could have been in the promised land in 11 days. They complained so much, God sent them in the wilderness for another 40 years. I love God. God will leave you stuck if you want to stay stuck. He's not going to force himself on you. 
It didn't force itself on me. I, he, has, he asked me, to, I, I had to come. And I had to ask God to forgive me. And I had to turn from those worldly ways. Because they were keeping me distracted. They were keeping me from going into my destiny with God because that's what it's set up for. The system is set up to keep you distracted so you do not know God and you'll follow all these other things. You'll follow Fox, CNN, CBS. You'll follow all these other things. You'll follow sports and this and cheer on that. But I can't come to church and I can't cheer Jesus because I'm consumed with everything else. Oh, I feel like preaching. I didn't want to preach, but it's fun. Because it's fun when you live right and you've made the right decision because you know who you are now. I know nothing else have a hold of me. So I, I always tell people, don't think with this. God's looking at this, the heart of a, of a man. David is a man after my own heart and all this wickedness, God goes on to say, He's a man after my own heart. It's the heart of a man that God looks at. You can't look at the head because the head is a knucklehead. Because <laughs> the head always tells me I want to do things my way, not God's ways. I do want to do it my way. Well, go ahead, do it your way. You can pick your sin, but you can't pick your consequences. I picked all the sins I wanted, but I couldn't pick the consequences. And guess what? They came. I had to pay a heavy price for it, too. You know, it's not, the, it's not the, you know, I'm not here to scare anyone. I'm here of the reality of what I lived. And I tell young people all the time, man, be holy. Walk with God. Don't get consumed with all this other stuff. It's a lie. It's a trap from the enemy. Tick tock, her talk, that talk. <laughs> they talking, talking, talking. You know, deceiving people. Got you consumed looking in there when you should be looking in this. Young people, eat this book up. This book is good. You taste and see that the Lord is good. You're going to save yourself a lot of headaches. If not, you will be deceived by the enemy. We all know who he is. He used to be Lucifer. He was in heaven, and he got kicked out because he wanted to be bigger than God. God just flicked him, probably, get out of hell. <laughs> I don't know, you can imagine, but he thought he was all that. It's like a lot of us, we'd be thinking, well, I'm all that. I'm smart, I'm educated, but do I, do I have a strong relationship with Christ where I can defend myself and I can take care of my family because I'm a righteous man now? See, you become a righteous man when you walk with Christ, righteous. When you walk in obedience with God, you become righteous. He takes the blinders off your eyes so you can see. The blinders are there until you, they won't be removed until you repent and ask God to help you. See, we play this macho man, like I got it all together, I know what I'm doing, and the devil be like laughing. Like, I'm going to destroy you eventually because the door will open up and I will destroy you because that's his whole plan. Jesus said it in John 10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. He's telling you what the enemy's coming to do. Steal, kill, and destroy you. He doesn't have only one job to do. It's to destroy you. As a man, he wants to destroy you so he can have your family. And if you're right with God, he has no authority to touch your household because you have put yourself in the right place with God and you're obedient to God and you walk in God's will. Amen? 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal 
their land. See, God just don't, God don't go halfway. When God rescues, redeems, and restores, God goes all the way in. The problem is with us is we don't come all the way in with him. We go halfway with God. We give God half of us. You're better off not giving him none of it. You're just going to give him half of it because you're not going to be able to reap the benefits of what comes with it, of going all the way in. If my people, that's us, the Gentiles, we're here today. If my people who are called, first you need to know you're called. Oh, many are called, but few are chosen. Many will be called, but few are chosen. Man, don't you know you can be chosen by God? Man, there's nothing greater than being chosen by God. There's nothing in this society that I could accomplish that's not greater than anything from coming from this pulpit. This is the greatest gift I ever received was the power and wisdom of knowledge through the power of the Holy Spirit. Better than hitting home runs, better than winning championships, better than making millions of dollars. It doesn't even come close to this because there is no bondage in this. There is nothing lacking in this. There's nothing lacking in God. What's lacking is inside of us. The hole that's deep down inside of us. See, when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, you understand King Solomon was the richest, wisest man in Jerusalem. And, you know, he goes on to talk about it's meaningless under the sun without God. All that he accomplished and, and, and built for himself. I think I read the first three chapters of that book, and the Holy Spirit says, circle I. And I circled I like 46, 47 times. How many times King Solomon said, I did this, I built that, I had that. He took his eyes off of the prize, which was God. He was a blessed man, but he took his eyes off of the prize. And I built this, and he ended up and ended up miserable. I don't ever want to be miserable again. I've been there before. I already, I already, I already expect, uh, experienced life and hell here with what I went through. I would never go back to that dark place ever again. There's nothing there. I'll stay alone and do what God's called me to do until he takes me home. Why? Because I know. I know, he, I know I'm called by him. I know that he spared me. I know that he saved me. I had cancer twice, lost my left kidney in the second surgery. Ended up in the Florida State Prison, T17169, because of addiction. Those that are in prison, I don't care what you, what you think. We are in prison out here. You just follow God. Because God has not forgot about you. People will forget about you, but God will never forget about you. And that's the encouragement for them. Because I was locked up, God didn't forget about me. He was just stopping me at every stop to spare me, to save me for his glory. I don't have an education, a school education. I played Major League Baseball for 17 years. I got a biblical education from the Holy Spirit. Because I started hiding out with him. And my wife was always hiding out with him. Because she knew she was called. So she was hiding out with him. She gets up every morning. We've been together over maybe 23 years now. She gets up every morning at 5.30 in the morning to roll out of bed and go study the word and be with God. And I used to be like, God, why are you always talking to her? <laughs> you know what he told me? She spends time with me. He said, when are you going to spend some time with me? I said, I'm not getting up at 5.30 in the morning. <laughs> he said, well, you better learn to spend some time with me. So guess what? When she go to bed, see, we go to bed like 8 o'clock. We old folks now. I'm old, you know. 8 o'clock, 8.30. She go to bed. I... I start hiding out in another room on the other side with God, saturating myself in the Word. Holy Spirit ascended up on me and started teaching me the Word. He says, what do you want to know about the Word? I said, I want to learn it. I want to retain Scripture. I said, don't put them in my head. Put them in my belly because my head is no good. So I get Scriptures out of my belly because he's retained them inside of me. That's how this works. 
It's been working like this forever. It's just those that apply themselves to it. It's just those. See, God told me to go the way for you to understand your call. You got to go after me like you went after baseball. How disciplined you were in baseball to train yourself and all that training you did by yourself. You got to do the same thing in this word with me if you want to really, truly know me. And that's what I had to do. And that's how you get there. It's not by somebody else helping you get there. You can get there if you're disciplined. If you really, really, truly want that relationship with Jesus. Man, they sing songs about Jesus, I get chills. You know why? Because he's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. He's the King of Kings, he's the Lord of Lords. He was wounded for your transgression, he was bruised for your iniquity. By his stripes, by his stripes, you get to be healed. You get to operate a different way from his stripes and from all that he had taken and t- taken to the cross for you. You get to be healed. You get to live a peaceful life here. Walking with Jesus. So many of us continue to try it on our own. We continue to search for it everywhere else. We're going to search to the doctor, the psychiatrist, uh, this pill and, and, and that, and, and they want to they feed you this. No, baby, all you need is a touch of Jesus. It's as simple as that. You get a touch of Jesus, you won't need none of that. Why? Because he's done it. He's the Messiah. He is the Messiah. There is no other Messiah. It is him. But you need to know your call. You need to humble yourself. Oh, that's a good word. Humility. Moses couldn't even speak, but he had humility and meekness. You know why God used him? Because of his meekness. And he was humble enough to tell God, I can't do that. I don't feel qualified. God goes to me and Moses and everybody else. No one is qualified. I qualify the call. And that's when a surrender comes for real and you'll be able to walk with humility and let God use you and train you up in his ways. Then you need to pray. Always pray. Mamas pray. Don't ever stop praying. You guys are the backbone of the kids because dad's got to work. But you keep praying for your kids. You keep your kids in church. Don't leave your kids out of church. If, no, if nobody want to come, you come with them kids. I remember my wife when, before I got to this place, and she was always going to church, and I'm laying on the couch. She says, I'm going to church this morning. And I'm sitting there watching Sunday football. And I'm saying, well, I'm going to watch Sunday football. She says, okay, bye. And she would go to church, and then she would come back. And you know what would happen? I was convicted. God convicted me, laying on that couch watching a football game. You already know what's going to happen. Somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. <laughs> I said, this is never going to happen again. The heck with a football game or whatever. They got later on replays and everything else to catch up on all that. But if I'm not in church with my family, I'm opening, I'm leaving doors open for the enemy to slide right on in. I'm talking to the men right now. Because God is calling men back home. Because he wants to do something in your life that's greater than you can ever imagine. If you surrender yourself to him, you stay on that outside, you're still going to be the same. But if you come in with him and come in and be a part of the church, don't come into church trying to change everything. Come in, surrender, humble. You know, just like when I said I was going into ministry, I had to humble myself. And and then all the people that I played ball with, they were like, yeah, well, let's see how long this is going to last. They thought I was coming back. It's been 20 years, but see, they don't know 2 Corinthians, I mean, yeah, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things come new. See, God has something new every day for you. I anticipate something new every day when I get up with God and I read this Bible. I anticipate something new. The scriptures are always new. Even though I know them, they're still new. 
even though I know this message, I preached a long time ago, and I know it's a new message for a new season, 2024. It's a year where God is telling his people, do my will. Follow my ways. You see the darkness of what's happening. It's dark. Don't miss out. We don't know when Christ is coming. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring us. But I do know one thing. Oh, glory to God. I do know one thing. Christ, Christ will never leave you nor forsake you. Everybody else will be gone. Relationships, everybody. Young people, hear me. Stay holy to God. You want that boy? Make sure he's holy to God. You want that girl? Make sure she's holy to God. Oh, don't be going, oh, oh, they're so cute. <laughs> cute, but do they have any principles? Are we lining them up with the principles? And being right, having their heart right. We got to get back to teaching our young people that. That's important. This, this thing here has lost everybody. The devil's playground. This is what this has become. Men, women, everybody getting lost in this. It's all a lie. It's about praying and seeking. It's about turning from those wicked ways. Turn. Turn. Well, people say, Mr. Darrell, uh, aren't you still a sinner? I say, yeah, I just don't practice anymore. <laughs> and there was a time I practiced the lifestyle, and that's all it was. But I had to come to a better understanding and know that God is real and God loves me. And if I do that, I can safeguard my life. Yes, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. According to his purpose, not your job, not your house, not your bank account. Because that house is not going with me. The job is not going with me. And I remember when God called me, he says, by the way, you need to know, I'm just loaning you all that stuff. I got a clear picture and a clear understanding from God that it doesn't belong to me. See, if you can... Give God what you have, God can give you what he has. Because what we don't understand is God doesn't need us, but he will use you for his good. God does not need money. He needs your heart. If God gets your heart like he has my heart and my wife's heart, if he has your heart, our checkbook looks like Journey Church, Journey Church, Journey Church. Because we donate and sow. We don't just give 10%. We give 25% because God gives us more and he multiplies us more because we give, because we freely give for the kingdom of God, for his church house. I know that's a tough sub subject. A lot of people have a hard time, you know, thinking, well, I'm not giving that church my money. Money to the church, you ain't giving it to the church, you're giving it to God. See, when you get the right heart, you understand it. I remember when I started, I had nothing. Three million in debt. God cleaned up my debt and gave me more than I was in debt. I don't know why. But I know I I know I I live by these principles, and I know this works. I don't know all about the, all the rest of it because when I was out there li living the heathen sound separated from God, it, it, it was the locust. The locust was eating up everything I had. Chewing it right up. But now it can't touch me. Why? Because I have submitted myself to the principles and the love of Jesus Christ and his will. 
for his people. Ephesians 3.20, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. The power that works in us. It's the wonderful working power of Christ. This, I don't know if somebody told you, I'm quite sure you got a good church here and you come here and you should be growing because this church is thriving. Don't just show up and say it's a Sunday thing to do to go to church. Get connected. They got groups and they got everything. They got everything for you to be a part of. I want God's blessings, but I won't do God's will. You get God's blessings when you do God's will. That's how it works. God is not short of blessing people. He blesses his people. If my people who are called by my name, that's what he said. He blesses his people when they obey him. To know the will of God is the highest of all wisdom. John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love Christ, keep his commandments. You don't have to keep anybody else's commandments, but his. He's working on the backside for you. He's making a way out of no way. If you are ignorant of God's word, you will always be ignorant of God's will. If we are ignorant of God's word, we will always be of his will. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Death. The reason I was dying was because of that. That scripture right there. That scripture is one of the greatest scriptures to understand about yourself. For the wages of sin is death. It eventually kills you. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Because Jesus took the sin for all of us. What I love about God he loves a sinner, but he hates the sin. But he's not pointing at anybody's sin. He loves the sinner. Jesus hanging with sinners. Pharisees and scribes are looking at him saying, why are you hanging with those sinners? Because he loves them. Because he knows if I get a hold of them and I touch them, their life will change forever. Because I am Jesus and I am the only one that can take their sins away. Nobody can take them away. You can't take them away. I can't take them away. We can want to be well. I can't take it away from you. Only Jesus can take that from you. And when he takes it from you, you become new. You become great. You become everything that God wants you to be. But you have to trust him. You have to trust his will, God's will for your life, God's will for your family's life, God's will for your kids is far greater than you can ever imagine. And it's not until you put it in his hands and let him do it. We can't do it because this body is a fleshly body. And it operates from that until we allow the spirit to ascend upon us and the spirit takes over in our life and the spirit leads us and guides us to all truth. It guides us to every good thing. It makes us understand that tasting and seeing that the Lord is good. That's what it does. A broken man like me, remember I'm leaving, driving home. Back to St. Louis. Had to drive here because the plane got canceled. My first trip of the year, the priest. Remember when Pastor CJ and me got connected, I was like, man, I don't want to go preach in January. <laughs> God was like, it's not about you. You answer the call. If they call, you go. 
I'm here because of that. I'm here because of Jesus. I'm here because of his love. Okay, my pitch now is to men, I love you. I want you to get this today. I want you to get right with God. Love that wife that God has given you. Honor her. Take care of her. God will take care of you if you do the right things in the right way. God has blessed me because I honor my wife, and I honor him, and I honor his ministry. My kids are blessed. I've never had to struggle like I did because I repented to God and asked God to forgive me. So he spared me, and he took care of my kids. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He's always caring. He's always looking for the next person that want, really want to run with him and do his purpose in this life here. It's good. It's better than anything I've ever done. And I've done a lot of crazy things. But this here, this is the greatest. This is the greatest gift I ever gave to myself is to become a true follower of Jesus Christ. Not of anything else, but of Jesus Christ. The book of John is about believing Jesus, turning water into wine, feeding the 5,000, raising Lazarus from the dead, raising Daryl Strawberry out of pit, putting him in a pulpit. The man is a miracle maker. Those songs, when you hear about miracle maker, Jesus is the miracle maker. When you put your trust in him, and you walk with him. He will do the miracle. Get out of the way. Most of us, as men, we delay our blessings with God because we think we know what we're doing. And most of the time, we don't know what we're doing. But that's been a setup by the enemy. John 3, he told Nicodemus, who was a Pharisee teacher leader, unless one is born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus was thinking about how can one go back into the womb and be born again. He was not talking about that. He's talking about the second birth. He's talking about born of the spirit. Cannot enter born until you're born of his spirit. We need to stop playing this game and saying, well, everybody's getting into heaven. No, 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 no. Stop playing that game. Read this book. It's here. I didn't make it up. There were other people before us that put this here for us to be born again, to be able to live and do some great things for God before our life is over. I don't want them to ever talk about my career. I want them to talk about my faith. That man left here with faith. He went running out of here in glory and faith because he learned through his teammate, Gary Carter, a man that lived in faith while we all was a bunch of heathens. He was living for Christ. He was drinking his milk, and everybody was laughing and persecuting him, but he had faith. We laugh about people with faith, but we don't understand. I don't, people are laughing because they don't have faith. Because when you do find it, you're going to tell somebody else about it. John 4, the woman at the well, there's no secrets of God. That woman at the well, Jesus was telling that woman, if you drink this living water, which is me, you'll never thirst again. Ever since I've been drinking the living water, I ain't never been thirsty. I'm not talking about alcohol. I've been sober a long time. I ain't touched alcohol in over 20 years. You know why? It's not because of anything great about me. It's because of the living water. The living water has fleshed it out. No desire. And he's telling this woman at the well about her five husbands. He said, the one you live with now is not your husband. God sees everything. He knows everything. John 8, they want to stone the woman because she was caught in adultery because of the law of, Mo uh, law of Moses, you know what I mean? And they wanted to stone her because she was caught in the midst of adultery. Jesus didn't come here to destroy the law. He came here to fulfill the law. Jesus was stooping down, right in the sand, raised up. He, without sin, cast the first stone. From the oldest to the youngest, dropped the stones because guess what? They all had fallen short. All, 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 all. Falling short is a good thing because now you get to get up. That's the greatest gift, you know, of falling short in life because you get to get up. And you get to get up and get to run to the cross, the symbol of the cross. And you get to get free. 
Then Jesus said to the woman, where are your accusers? Has anyone accused you? She said, no. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. <laughs> Glory to God. You know what that means? He's setting you free. That's what he did to me. That's what he did to her. That's what he's done to so many. John 5, the pool of Bethesda, a man sat there for 38 years, paralyzed, had a condition. You know what I love about Jesus in that text? Jesus didn't ask that man about his condition because you know what? Jesus already knew the condition of that man. Just like everybody in here today, he knows the condition of you. You know what he said to that man? Do you want to be well? The man says, sir, every time I try to get into the pool, he's not talking about the excuses. He said, do you want to be well? And the man finally said, yes. He said, yes, pick up your bed and walk and made him well like that. Well, 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 well. God makes everybody well when you decide to follow him. He makes everybody well. Everybody is God's number one pick. Not some of us, all of us. You are his first pick. When he picks you, you are his first pick for him to make you well. He leaves nobody behind. We leave ourselves behind because our selfishness and self-centeredness and Jesus is not real and he's not this and he's not coming back. Well, if he is, well, while all these things happen and the Bible says there's going to be trials and tribulations. They're supposed to happen. I would encourage you if you don't have one of these, go pick one up for yourself and read it. And if you have one, start opening it up. Start bringing it to church. Get you a pad and a pen like these young people are in the front row, and they take notes. Because, see, that's when you grow when you do that. You don't just grow. It's not just going to jump in you. You got to get into action. So everybody with the head bow real quick. I'm going to close. We're a little bit over. I'm going to close right where you're at. If you got something that you need to bring back to God, I want you to slip your hand up. I'm going to pray for you. If you got, want to be born again, I want you to slip your hand up. You two online, just slip your hand up. If you want to rededicate yourself to Christ, just slip your hand up right now. Wherever you are, wherever you are, just slip it up. God, God, here I am. I see you up there. I see you up there. I see you up there. God, God is merciful. I see you up there. He's a loving God. He's a merciful God. He cares for you. He cares for you. Too many times we walk out of here and we never make a commitment. And we walk out just like we came in. Nothing's changed. For all of you that raise your hand online here, thank you. God loves you. Celebration in heaven. Everybody sees you in heaven. Great celebration for your life. You are important. So I'm going to pray over you. And hopefully you have experienced God's love and compassion for you today because he cares for you. Some of you thinking about leaving your marriage, don't leave that marriage. You fight for that marriage. Devil is a liar. Father, we love you. How do you praise you? Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you for this day because you have chosen this day and they have chosen you, Father. You saw the hands that are up. Those that are online, you see those, wherever they may be, Father, I ask that you would just crown them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. That no weapon formed against them shall prosper. They're more than conquered through Christ Jesus. Father, we bind every assignment and rebuke the devourer from the enemy over their life. We know he no longer has authority over their life, Father. We pray that this is a new day for them. We pray that they would come to church. They would connect, get in groups, let people help them. Father, because we all need help. And the gathering of the saints is where we get well. So we pray for life today. We pray that those that thought about raising their hand, Father, we pray for them too. Cover us all in this day. And as we go forward, Father, we give you the honor and praise and the glory. We send this petition up to you, Father. We ask that you would seal it over everybody. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God for you guys.